the, I think the first thing is to acknowledge that in the early period the rigor was extraordinary. That they, they were extremely rigorous in their methodology. And in many ways Western academia is an extension of the Islamic tradition. And so it's quite ironic now that the Western academics have uh, uh, rigor in their tradition and the Muslims have become very slack uh, in their tradition with the exception of what are termed the Salafi people who are very rigorous about authenticating uh, narrations. So that's one thing, is, is just restoring the rigor and being more critical of what's come down from the past. The second thing is to recognize that the ta'wil, is, uh, which is a, a type of hermeneutic, that the, the, the interpretation of text has to be grounded in the vastness of the Arabic language, that there's a reason why God chose Arabic as the medium. And so the mastery of the Arabic language is the sine qua non of dealing with tradition. You, you have to have, a, a, and it takes many, many years to master um, the, the Arabic language. But that's the, one of the things that Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya has, is a deep mastery of the language. So he's able to really see so much in, and I've seen him argue with scholars about uh, particles and prepositions and why, there was just a court case in the United States on, on, uh, on the Oxford comma and, and why the Oxford comma was important because there was a legal situation where the comma uh, created ambiguity. And so people forget that language is at the essence of our ability to communicate. And, and, but you have to stay within the interpretive uh, parameters of that uh, ability. And the third thing that's extremely important is humility. Because if you're not humble, God won't give you success. Um, and he actually says in the Quran that he will remove his signs from people who have arrogance. You know, that God will remove his signs from people that have arrogance. The most important thing in terms of developing scholars in Singapore is the importance of the context of Singapore. If you train your scholars outside of Singapore, invariably they'll be trained within an alien context that has very different problems and their teachers will not understand the problems that they're facing. One of the wisdoms of our tradition is that a mufti uh, cannot give fatwa for other places. He has to give fatwa within his own context. That's a great wisdom of our religion. So the mufti has to be from the people, he has to know their culture, he has to know their a'raf, their customs and their norms. And so it's very important, I think, for Singapore to develop an independent um, tradition here. I would like to see them create their own Azhar University, um, to, uh, where people from Egypt come here to study Islam. Uh, we don't need to go to the traditional heartlands of Islam. Islam has always been able to indigenize and to create its own uh, indigenous scholars. And it, it will never be truly um, a world religion uh, without having the capacity to do that. And that's why it was a world religion and that's why now it's seen as an Arab religion, it's seen as um, uh, a religion that just um, exports a culture to other cultures. It's not the way it should be, it's not the way it was, and hopefully it won't be the way it will be. <laughs>